Are you excited that Florida State knocked off Clemson in Death Valley? You should be, and you should also be excited to know that eventually this team's going to the college football playoff. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another episode of Locked On Seminoles. I'm your host, Brian Smith. Thank you for joining me each and every day to watch Locked On Seminoles or listen to it on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get it. Please like and subscribe to this podcast and share it. And also, my favorite, make sure you make a comment if you get the opportunity on YouTube. Love to hear what you think and what you would like to hear about. Today's show is going to be about yesterday's victory over Clemson. It is also going to be about the opportunities ahead, what they need to do. And then it's kind of a culmination. What's ahead in, in the final segment? Going to do about 20 minutes, give or take. Kind of go over everything with Florida State in a big box picture before we get into Monday next week. Just, just as a reminder, Florida State is not on the docket for a game, but this is the most important week for the rest of the year because A, it's the first one, and B, if you don't get better in your off week, you're not going to finish where you need to finish. So first off, let's talk about the reasons that Florida State won. The biggest play, you get the touchdown for Deloach on the defense. I mean, that was just tremendous timing. Clemson had taken control of the game. They're up seven. They're driving. Bam. Ball loose. Scoop and score. That place about had a heart attack. Those are the kinds of plays that Clemson usually makes, right? Really. I mean, it's the kind of plays they've made for years. And now all of a sudden, Florida State flipped the script. Tie game, Clemson got tight, Florida State made the plays they needed to, and then in overtime, hey, I mean, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I'm a stat guy, and I, I love the trends within a game, and this is this is why quarterbacks are talked about so much, but uh, Stat Broadcast has a great, great statistic. It just shows every throw that a signal caller makes. There was a trend where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Jordan hit eight passes in a row, but then he got a little bit different result for, towards the end, and he even missed four in a row, but then he hit the one that mattered. Yeah, that's right. Touchdown, second and nine. If he doesn't throw a good ball on second and nine, and you're in third and nine in overtime, that's not good. Couldn't have thrown it any better. Keon dunked on the guy. Touchdown goals. Seminoles. Find a way to get it done in overtime. That was a clutch performance during a game that, quite frankly, Florida State struggled in some areas, and I'll get into that here in a minute. But they found a way. And that's what this is about. If you're going to raise your program in any way, shape, or form, and regardless of sport or level, you've got to be clutch. Florida State's clutch. The turnover, the bomb, well, 24 yards to fade ball, they, they threw haymakers, and Clemson was knocked out, period. Cade Klubnick way out exceeded my expectations, and they still lost. Florida State's running game went way below what I thought it would do, and they still won. I believe the Noles had 22 yards rushing, and I am going to go off on that here in just a second. If you'd have told me FSU had less than 100 yards, I'd have said they'd lost. If you'd have told me Klubnick was completing over 60% of his passes, I'd been a little nervous. If you'd have said over 65%, I'd said, uh-oh. Let's see what exactly Klubnik had. I've got the numbers here. This, this young man played pretty good, even though he got smacked a few times. Florida State put some pressure on him. I really liked how verse played. Uh, I picked Patrick Payton to be my guy. He got the big sack at the end of the first half. He had the, pat, the pass that he knocked down late in the game. Payton played really well, and I think he's starting to come on. That, that's a dude. But if you really look at it, K. Klubnik played pretty well, even though he got smacked around and his receiving corpse is banged up. Uh, the Brown kid's going to be really good. He's going to be a problem down the road, Tyler Brown. But Florida State did a pretty good job, even with some busts. Some guys got too open in the middle of the field. They got to figure that out. I, I don't know if they're going to run Tampa 2 or whatever, but Clemson found some holes in the middle of the D 
Florida State just kept finding a way. They would take punches, get get back in the ring, and throw haymakers, and they finally landed. On the other side, just to just to read off a few stats, uh, let's go over the basics. Jordan Travis, 21 of 37, 289, two touchdowns, only 57%. But again, he was throwing some bombs. Trey Benson was the leading rusher, and this this is pathetic afterwards. Seven carries for 25 yards, long of 12. Rodney Hill, three for one. Tofili, two for zero. Travis, now sacks count against him, but six for minus two. 22 yards rushing on 20 carries. Pathetic. Now, I know the offensive line lost Mo in the middle of the game, the center. That's that's devastating. The left tackle situation didn't work out as well as I thought. They're just not able to run and get enough push up across the board. That's something we're going to talk about just a little bit more here in a minute. But even with all of that, hitting those big plays, again, I want to come back to this about five more times. It's unbelievable how clutch Florida State was because they did not play their best ball, and Clemson was the better team for the majority of the game, in my opinion. I don't think they're that good normally, but this was by far the best Clemson had played. If they'd have played like this against Duke, they'd have won. Instead, they lost by three touchdowns. But Clemson made the plays when they needed to. Here's here's a really unique stat, and I don't know if there's another team that does this consistently. But Florida State just comes up with the big passing plays. Average yards per completion, Florida State, 13.8 against a high-level Power 5 team that has a pretty good corner in Wiggins. I mean, he got hurt. I hope he's, I hope he's uh, okay. And they had some other guys play decent. But Florida State found a way to get on, get on the other side and make some catches, a few run-after catches. They were clutch. So I'm, I'm happy for them that they figured it out. But now it's time to kind of look at some issues too. And then we'll talk a little bit about the AP poll that's going to be coming out here very shortly. I think Florida State needs to figure out two things more than anything else. Number one, they got to do something about the injury problem up front and get that fixed post haste. I know the schedule is very light for Florida State for the majority of the rest of the season. I've got it up here somewhere. I'll find it in a second. But Florida State schedule, their next game is Virginia Tech on the 7th of October. They'll, They'll maul them. Syracuse just lost their best playmaker. They should win, but they got a pretty good quarterback. We'll see. They've got Duke coming to town October 21st. We'll know more about Duke. They play Notre Dame this next weekend at home. Game day's going there. That'll be interesting. Wake Forest, not that great. Pittsburgh is dreadful. The big game, obviously, is with Miami. That's nothing surprising. Miami's a lot better than I thought they would be this year, even though what I, I picked them to go 9-3 and three this year, but they might be a little better than that. They also have some major injury problems right now. North Alabama, and then a trip to Gainesville against a decent Florida team. They're ranked 25th, but they're nowhere near as good as Florida State. All of this tells me the following. Even with the injuries, even with the issues in the secondary, uh, O-line secondary are the two biggest problems, obviously. Florida State, they got a bye week. They have a chance to get going, but they still have to fix these two problems. Come hell, come high water, the offensive line cannot block for 20-some yards rushing. I'm not going to go into that. There's no need to go into that. That is pathetic. If anybody that's a Florida State fan is offended by that or somebody inside that that coaching office or that locker room, too bad. You ran for 22 yards. That stinks. That's on you, period. Um, The secondary is more mental stuff. That's actually easier to fix. Run game and O-line play is beyond complex. That's Calc 4. That's not algebra. But they still got to fix it. Good luck. The secondary, there's always seemingly like one guy in a clutch moment that is just freaking free. And I'm talking about two, three yards away from somebody. They're not relating well in between their zones, passing from one guy to the other. In man coverage, they just flat get beat sometimes. And then there's the occasional like, uh, whose guy is that? Uh, There's nobody near him and the ball is about to hit his hands. Florida State has one or two of those at least a game. That is mental. That's at this point. It's not on the coaches. It's not on the players. It's on both. Coaches aren't figuring it out to help the players. Maybe the scheme's too complex. Uh, Maybe it's not. Maybe the players are just completely failing. Knowles is not where he needs to be. Dent's injured. A lot of moving parts there, too. Still not as complex as the O-line. But they can't be giving up deep shots that, quite honestly, are just like a basic over route. And a guy's just wide open. He's not even a primary. And he's like, well, I might as well throw it. There's nobody from Florida State guarding this guy. That can't happen anymore. You're not going to be 
a team in the playoff unless you fix that. In my open, I mentioned this team's going to go to the playoff. I expect them to fix it. They got a bye week right now. Then it's about as close to a bye week with the Power Five as you're going to get in Virginia Tech. No offense to the Hokies, they stink. They need to get this bye week. And somehow, I, good luck to Florida State's coaches. This is one of the hardest things to do. Keep the players motivated in a bye week after a major game. That's super hard. Uh, it's almost impossible, as a matter of fact. It's natural letdown. But they got to find a way to get better, especially up front on the line. That is a slow, tedious, horrendously awful process to watch develop if there's problems early in the year. And then you add injuries. Left tackle and center are your two most important spots. They've got guys banged up at left tackle and center. Can't do anything about it. But if it doesn't get fixed, even if they make the playoff, they're going to get they're going to get beat. That you're you run for 20 yards against Michigan or Georgia, that game is not going to be close at all. So they need to figure that out. And then of course the secondary didn't coming back whenever it is. We're not going to hear anything. I'm sure they're going to say it's day to day or whatever. As I always like to mention on this show, I never believe coaches anyway. But they need Dent back in the secondary to help the rotation, et cetera. And they probably just need another guy to step forward. During bye weeks, this is the good news. It's easier to have that happen at a skill spot, DB obviously being one. Florida State has that chance. I have no idea. I'm not going to speculate. Somebody needs to prove in practice they deserve more reps, period. At nickel, at safety, at corner. I mean, corner would be delightful but that's what every college coach wants to hear every single day when they walk in the office. It's the most thin spot in college football by a landslide every single year. And that's not going to change. Nobody really wants to play it because they'd rather play receiver and they have similar skills, but Florida state, they've got some pretty good ones, but they didn't play up to par on Saturday. And even though they had some good, good plays, not enough. They need somebody else to step up and they need to be able to get those clutch plays and PBUs and pick sixes that Florida State is famous for. You don't have to have a Leroy Butler back there, but they, they got to get something going where the other team literally has to change their offensive game plan and or special situation play calling based on number and fill in the blank is in Florida State secondary. Right now, that's not the case. That's just the way it is. Florida State doesn't have a dude. And it is fact that teams that win the national title have first and second round picks at corner and that's usually the case at safety quite often as well. Florida State is not in that boat right now as I see it. I could be wrong, but unless that changes, that's going to keep them out of the national title game. Still can make the playoff, but that's going to be pretty hard to beat anybody in the playoffs without a big-time defensive back that can take something away from another team. Final point about the defense before I go into the back half of this. They have to be able – to continuously get pressure on the quarterback, and they did better yesterday. Verse did a good job. Peyton, they pushed the pocket more. I was pretty happy with that. That helped the secondary. That is very important. They hadn't really, <clears throat> excuse me, gotten home a lot. They got three sacks. That's important. Clemson's offensive line is unbelievable, but they're pretty good. They're at home. They got a good offense. Good job by the Knowles there. That, as they say, is huge because without it, you aren't going anywhere. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. LinkedIn Jobs gives you this chance. Right now, I'm fortunate. The only thing I might need is another intern. But even with that, I can go to LinkedIn Jobs and get it done. LinkedIn Jobs is a very easy platform to use. However, I know it. I know a lot of my friends have used it. Several companies that have been around use it. One of my best friends is on it basically daily just to make sure he doesn't have a better opportunity. The reason it works both ways. Candidates want to be on there just like jobs that are great jobs for somebody that a company's putting out are on there. So it's a good match. Easy to create a profile for a posting on LinkedIn. It's easy and it's quick too. add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the skills that you need and have the experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. For me, it's finding interns, like I mentioned. But for you, it could be a job that's about a, a daycare. It could be a professional firm like accounting. It doesn't matter. That's one of the cool things about LinkedIn. There's everything. It's up to you. 
whatever your business is that you have now or something that you're going to start, it's a good starting point just to figure out if you want to start somewhere. What kind of candidates could I find if I started this type of business and fill in the blank for you? It's it's really a unique site. So to wrap up with LinkedIn, jobs help you find qualified candidates you want to talk to and faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The back half here real quick, just spend a few minutes. I'm curious how the poll is going to come out here in just a little bit, what the reaction is. Can Florida State do something? And that's why I put a little last segment, if you're watching on YouTube, what's next? Well, what's next is Florida State just has to get better. Surviving like they did against Clemson is not going to be something you're going to do over and over again, especially against similar levels of talent. Again, the schedule for the Knowles down the stretch is – quite honestly, pretty mild compared to some of the other teams. It's certainly not, you know, traditional SEC West or anything. But if you screw around against Duke, you can lose. If you screw around against Miami, you can lose. You screw around against Florida, especially in the swamp. Yes, I know Florida State fans can't imagine it. You can lose. The offensive line uh, doesn't do any better and you run for under 50 yards against Florida, yeah, they're going to be in the game. Don't put yourself in a position where a goofy play can beat you. Clemson should have won. I mean, the big play on on the missed pass protection goes for a touchdown. The kid misses the field goal at the end. All of those things, if you look at it, Florida State was fortunate. They created some of it, I'll grant you, but they needed a little help. Is that going to happen every time? You have to get better now. It's the off week, and that's what's next, man. I'm going to hammer on that all week on this podcast. Just as a reminder, and I know that whether they'll deny it or not, there's somebody in every major college football office that watches shows like this just to get a, a heaping of what's going on. What are what are, what are people saying about us? Um, I, I constantly mention how college football coaches, from my personal experience, are some of the most thin-skinned people on planet Earth. They're, they're worse than politicians, oftentimes. No kidding. And that's why they, they want to know what's being said. But that being the case, I hope they hear every word of this. You better fix it, and you better fix it soon, O-line and in the secondary, because otherwise you're not going to just get beat in the playoff, which I do expect you to make. You will get pummeled. It's up to you to fix it, though. Got a long way to go to get there, and I know coaches, oh, next game and all that. Baloney, I know they're thinking about it. I know they're talking about it. I know the players are, too. This may not be publicly. It's just true. So real quick, just to kind of finish up, a couple of the teams that if I was voting, this is how I would vote my top top four. Washington would be number one for me. Their offense is ridiculous. Number two, I would go Georgia because I think their depth will carry them through the season, even though they are flat out sleepwalking much of the time. They're not going to hit their stride until probably early November. They're not. Uh, new quarterback. Uh, their running back's just kind of getting his legs. Dejan's a good player but he's only played two games. They they aren't quite where they need to be. Their other running back's been banged up. They'll be good, but whether or not they're going to reach their potential anytime soon, I don't know. Florida State might beat them if they played right now. I don't know, but Georgia's got a little way to go. They don't have that dominant receiver like a Keon or, or a Johnny either. I think that the other team that's really interesting is Michigan, but I would actually put them below Florida State right now, and here's why. Michigan's the team I picked to win it, before this season started. And I'm by no means a Michigan fan, I can assure you. They're very balanced in everything they do with the running game on both sides of the ball, et cetera. But they just don't play anybody and they sleepwalk. Even they, they sleptwalk a little bit yesterday with freaking Rutgers. Uh, that's a team they should beat by 25 without trying. And it should have been by the middle of the third quarter. Uh, Jim just tries to run the ball and get out of there because they have so much more talent than everybody they're playing right now. I mean, Michigan's schedule is a complete joke. But Florida State's won a couple of big games. They beat LSU, they beat Clemson as a combination. I think that's the best two wins for any team in college football. I would rank the Knowles number three. That's just my opinion. So I didn't fill out a ballot, or, and I really don't care to for anything else or locked on or anything else. This is my opinion. One's Washington. I, I think their offense is so exciting. In this era, you got to score. Why not? Georgia, Florida State, Michigan. That, that's who I got. So 
Uh, make sure you check out Monday's show. We're going to talk about a, a bunch of different things, what recruiting's like in the off season and how it relates to the off week. There's a little bit of a connection there. And this is a really important week with recruiting because coaches can kind of get out there and see some kids. And we're also going to talk about some of the things that Florida State needs to do more individually. I talked big box today. So once again, please hit that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe to this podcast, share it with somebody and above all else, comment. If you're on YouTube, let me know what you think. If there's something you'd want to hear about. Again, this is the off week. There's something for you to, to listen to. I'm sure that you want to hear about. Drop me a note. Be happy to listen to it and take a, take a gander at it. Maybe it's something I can turn into a complete podcast or at least one of the three segments that I do here at Locked On Seminole. So once again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.